In this video, I'm going to go over the Python threading module. Threading allows us to run multiple tasks in different threads, but still in the same memory space. The threading module comes pre-installed with Python, but you'll need to have Python set up properly. Open up Python IDLE and create a new file. To thread a method, first import threading and then create the method you want to thread. Mine will be simply print hello world. Now create a list to hold the threads and create a for loop that will create the threads. In this for loop, create the thread using threading.thread by passing your method to target, adding this to the list and then calling it start method. Save it and then run. You should see all the strings printed on a new line. If not, that's okay. They have all printed out on the same line as a new character for each item has not been written to standard out before the previous new lines. You can see the cursor is now further down. If you want to pass arguments to a method when creating a thread, simply pass them as a tuple to the args in threading.thread. If your method has only one argument, make sure to include a preceding comma in the arguments to show that the item is still a tuple. Now when I run this method after saving, it is expected that all print statements are on the same line for the same reason it occurred last time. However, this time we can see that the arguments have been passed and printed. To thread a class, you must extend threading.thread as shown here. You then need to create a method in the class for the thread to start from, called run. Now just like before, create a list and loop to create the threads. This time, instead of creating a new instance of threading.thread, we can just create a new instance of the class. Now after we append the thread to the list and call start like before, the run method will be called. Saving and running this will print the strings just like in the first example. To pass arguments to a class, simply set up the arguments in the class and pass arguments when you instantiate the class as you normally would. Saving and running this will print the strings like in the second example with the parameters passed in. Threading a class and a method may seem the same, but if you thread a class, that object can encapsulate data in a better way to do what you want for that specific instance. Joining a thread allows us to wait until it is terminated before we carry on. For example, creating a thread and starting it will mean that the thread is run as we continue. This is not a good idea if the thread result is needed to continue. To solve this issue, we can call .join on the thread. This means we wait for the thread to die before we carry on. Typically, you would use .join after all your threads have been started, so you don't wait in between each of them. This example is very good if you have to wait for multiple requests at once. If you want to get all the threads currently running, call a for loop on threading.enumerate. Each item iterated over is in a live thread including the main thread, which is what the script starts in and any others running. A good example to show this is to get the number from each thread. When running this, it will fail, as the main thread does not have a number. To fix this, we can set up a try accept statement and get the name that has been given to the thread if it has no number. Running this, you can see the main thread, the threads with the numbers, and the sock thread. Sock thread also exists because I'm using IDLE to demonstrate this. After some time you may be holding a thread object that has died. To see if a thread is alive or dead, call it as alive method. If it returns true, the thread is still running. When running this new example, the first thread we created is alive, but then we wait 0.1 seconds for the other three to die. Now when looking at the rest of the threads we created, they will all be dead. Please note that threading will not make your program run faster due to the global interpreter lock. If you want to read more about this or want any of the code in this tutorial, check out the article linked in the description. If you have any questions about this video, leave a comment and I'll try to get back to you as fast as I can.